Good morning, lights. In this video, I share a clip by Alan Watts. This clip addresses the seemingly impossible idea of surrender without will. So, with that said, let's lift the veil. One step as I take it sweeps me away beneath and above I am. Bursting passion, a taste of this direction, hunger and thirst I am. Focus, distraction I am. I feel every part as I am. I see Peace in your madness, I am. The thing which all these great Eastern philosophers insist upon, whether they be Indian or whether they be Chinese, is at first sight rather depressing to us because the fundamental insight is that our ego and our will can do nothing to acquire this feeling of fundamental unity and solidarity. It can't do anything at all. And the feeling cannot be had until, as we say, we have given up our own will, set aside our own ego. This, after all, too, corresponds with the great basic Christian insight, where, as for example, Dante says of the will of God, in his will is our peace. Or as another Christian writer says, our wills are ours to make them thine. In all the great religious traditions of the world, there is the recurrent theme of self-surrender, of giving up oneself. Now at first sight, this seems something spineless. This seems something weak and uh, namby-pamby and... Uh, as if, you know, the Marxists always say the religion is, religion is the opium of the people. And they validate their point of view by saying, look, religion always tells people to give up their will. That's so that the tyrant can push them around. The nasty capitalists can make them do what they want. But they forget that in the giving up of our own will, we do not surrender power, we gain power. Because in the giving up of our own will, we are, as it were, making ourselves an empty channel through which a greater power than our own can pass through. Lao Tzu said, you know, the usefulness of a window is not so much in the frame as in the empty space through which something can be seen. And so in the same way, you might say that the power of a human being is not so much in his particular individual identity as in a certain kind of emptiness through which something can flow. And so all the great religions of the world, and most especially those of the Asian world, have as their deepest insight the principle that man comes into his own and finds his true power in standing out of his own way, in getting out of his own light. And this involves, as I said, the surrender of our own will. But you see, always the problem is, how does the will surrender the will? There is a Chinese saying that when the wrong man uses the right means, the right means work in the wrong way. In other words, if I'm the wrong man, that is a willful, selfish, domineering person. Anything I do to give up my will will be motivated by my fundamental selfishness. I shall be, in other words, like a clever woman who wants to get her man. But she knows that this particular man always runs away if you go after him. So she acts as if she doesn't want him. 
She gives him up, apparently, but her real motive is, of course, the getting. And therefore, she is just, as it were, playing a trick with the kind of clever feminine wile or deceit. And so, in the same way, if we say, now, I'm going to surrender my ego, I'm going to be unselfish, I'm going to give up my will so that I can become one with God, or so that I can feel this splendid fellowship with the whole universe and feel that my identity is no longer lonely little me, but all, I shall have as the fundamental motive doing it, after all, for my own advantage. After all, because this is a new way of finding spiritual and psychological security. And so, because it is basically insincere, it won't work. And therefore, what is at first sight depressing about Eastern insights into this matter is not only that our will, when it is aggressive and assertive, stands in the way of this understanding. It also goes on to say that we cannot even surrender our wills on purpose. And that when it becomes perfectly clear to us that there is nothing at all that we can do about it, either positively by trying to achieve something or negatively by giving ourselves up. This is the fundamental deflation of our ego and its whole domineering quality. This is the limit. At this, it doesn't give itself up. It sees that it has no alternative but to give up. And from the emptiness, the silence, the feeling of impotence that follows this, the whole vision of a united world bursts like a flower from its bud. Your trust.